good. I'll just pause it. Right on time here. Thank you all so much for joining us for this webinar, Hiring for Mountain Businesses. My name is Allison Bektesh. I'm the Community Engagement Manager with the Aspen Chamber Resort Association. Um, so I just wanna start out by saying that this is an example of programming that we do here at the Chamber to meet your needs. We hear you. We know that filling those open positions has risen to the top as one of our um, big needs from our member businesses. And so uh, we're bringing you an expert today to help you get to that. Um, so we'll have a presentation. We will save question and answers to the end in case there's an upcoming slide that is the very answer to the question you have, but you will definitely have time to interact with our speaker today. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, I also wanna introduce on the call today is Sarah Reynolds Lasser. She is the Senior Director of Business Development at the Aspen Chamber. So she is a great person to connect with for your membership needs, or if you were interested in exploring um, some further opportunities such as sponsoring future events. Um, those of you who are not yet members, but have joined us for the great content today, she's also the person to connect with and look into an Aspen Chamber membership. That is srenolds at aspenchamber.org. So we will move on to introducing our speaker, Erin Schlichting, uh, founded Mountain Careers in 2015 out of a need to better connect the professionals uh, who want to live in our amazing mountain communities. It has now become a website that reaches over 10,000 subscribers weekly. And I'm actually guessing that that number is probably higher than my research showed. There's a job board, newsletters, social media, um, as well as blogs and educational content for um, both those people who are recruiting, those of us who it is our intention to live and work in mountain towns, as well as those who need to find those people looking for those jobs. Um, I'm gonna let her go deeper into the value of networking and social media as part of that. But I will say, if you follow her on Instagram, you will see that she uh, features different job postings and um, all in the way that is most enticing to click on. So she's really hit that niche. Um, I will turn it over to Erin and um, help moderate questions at the end. Thanks so much for attending. Awesome, thank you, Sarah and Allison. I am thrilled to be here. I am gonna jump on and share my screen quickly to make sure we have that all ready to go. Um, let's see, how are we looking? Great. Good. Awesome. Um, well, thank you guys for having me here. Um, a bit about myself and um, how I know how I am excited and passionate about hiring in the mountains. Um, I've lived in Vail, Colorado um, for close to 20 years now, and my entire career has been in human resources um, and recruiting. So I have um, only worked in our mountain communities um, and started young and early after graduating college and just knew that I had a passion for attracting people to our mountain towns like myself. Um, I have now evolved into um, a mother of two um, in our communities and just know how wonderful it is to live and work in our communities, but I'm also not um, blind to the obstacles that happen here. So I started mountain careers um, to fulfill a need for myself. I've worked at um, mountain resorts, um, local government uh, my husband has always worked in retail and rental stores, so um, I know firsthand um, the challenges that you guys are feeling right now, um, and can I'm going to share some data with you guys today, and then also some of the best ways that um, you can try to make hiring easier for yourselves. So um, ladies, if you see anything in the chat, feel free to pause me, otherwise we will definitely save time at the end to answer your questions. Hopefully this can be casual, um, so don't hesitate um, to either jump in or um, tell me if you have a question, something's not clear. Um, so I do want to leave you guys with some actionable steps today. I want to, so we're going to walk through really four main reasons or ways, action items that you can implement following this call to kick you off on your hiring journey. Um, first, we're going to talk about what it means to have a um, meaningful and competitive job posting we're then going to talk about how you can market to the right candidate, those right people who hopefully will stay with your organization for a long time. 
um, a quick touching on how to create an effective hiring process only because that's key to capturing right those um, those uh, target market once they do reach you. And then also a little bit about how retention, how focusing on your culture is really a piece that can help you retain top talent. talent. So first and foremost, I just wanna like, get rid of the elephant in the room. We know this is not easy um, and it does take time and energy for hiring. Um, I like to call attention to that because um, usually if you're a small business um, or even a small nonprofit, you know, you might not have someone dedicated to recruiting, um, but it is an important part of your business and it does take time and money. So ensuring that you have people dedicated to this process, um, a budget allocated to advertising um, is going to be an important part. We know that in the last year, they've been referring to it as the great resignation. Um, people are quitting their jobs across the country at higher rates than we've ever, ever seen um, nationally. And so this isn't just something that's happening in our mountain communities, which again, I think is important to level set a little bit um, that, you know, although housing is hard, childcare is hard, there's all these challenges. It is important to remember that, um, it's not just here and that there are ways for us to sort of overcome some of this and not just sort of throw our hands up and say, hiring's too hard, I, I can't get it done. So exactly how hard is it? <laughs> what, let's look at some of the statistics here. Um, this is the most, um, I will have to give credit to um, your local workforce center. Um, they sent me over some great data that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today and they are an amazing resource. Um, so don't ever hesitate to reach out to the local Pitkin County workforce um, center um, as um, to get assistance in your hiring. They are happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations as well. Um, but as you can see, when unemployment is really low, that means we have a smaller, talent pool, we have a smaller amount of people looking for jobs. Um, Colorado is historically in the last five years, since I've been looking at the data, um, lower than the United States. And then our mountain communities um, are some of the lower ones as well. So you can see Pitkin sitting here at 3%. Um, that means a small amount of people are jobless or looking for employment in your area. Not, not a good place um, for us to be when we're trying to fill our teams. Um, the good news is that some companies who are really focusing on their, um, on their people, their people strategies, their hiring tactics, um, can, can do well. Um, anecdotally, this slide in here is, um, uh, from a company called Dave and Matt's vans. They're out of gypsum, Colorado. They build camper vans for people. They started off, I think as like a team of four and now have grown to probably 25, 30 employees. Um, their strategy from the beginning has always been to make these meaningful jobs for employees. So although building a camper van is trendy these days, um, you know, at essence, they're, they're constructors, construction workers, they're laborers, but they, part of their business strategy was focusing on attracting and retaining talent. Um, and they, they were seeing a lot of great applicants, even when other companies weren't. Um, I would say that talking to them recently, the number of applicants have gone down significantly. So employers need to know that, um, you know, before if I was hiring for a good job at Eagle County, we might get 65 candidates. Now we might get 25. So um, that doesn't mean that we can't still find one strong person in that pool, um, but everybody is experiencing smaller pools of applicants for each job. So here's the good news. <laughs> the good news is that um, on average, about 85% of people, professionals, think about yourself here, are open to new opportunities. So we say about you know, 12 to 15% of, of professionals, um, people pr employed in the workforce are actively looking for a job. That means they're on Indeed daily or they're flipping through the newspaper. 85% of, pr of professionals are open to new opportunities. That means you're happy in your job, you like your job, um, but if the right opportunity came to you or if your life circumstance changed um, or if you saw something with better benefits, better pay, uh, better career growth, you would be open to it. So um, keep that in mind as we go through today's presentation. Uh, the goal of your hiring is really going to be like, how do we attract this 85% of people? Um, in the recruiting world, we call these passive applicants. How do we get ourselves in front of these 85% of people already living in the Aspen community 
um, to know about your um, place of work and to want to come work for you. Um, that's really the goal and some things that I hope to talk about in today's presentation, um, especially with housing being the barrier that it is, um, focusing your recruitment strategy locally is going to be um, obviously one of your strong, stronger tactics. So still level setting here, um, just to show you, this is from the Workforce Center again. This is really unfilled positions per industry is how I would describe it. So you can see that the accommodations and food service um, are all of the sectors that, that we have. My guess is a lot of you work in there are um, you know, some, some going as far as 20% unfilled um, in industries. So those are gonna be the harder industries to fill. Your competitors are out there posting jobs and hiring, um, which is gonna make it more challenging for you. Um, and just more of a goal to say, how can we stand out in such a challenging market? Um, also important to understand why, where, why did we, how did we get where we are? Why, where did our workforce go? Um, I think one of, this is some clear statistics here, but I do think one of the things that contributed to um, our lack of workforce on top of housing is during the pandemic, our resorts shut down and a lot of our seasonal workforce left our communities, right? They were, um, everybody was scared. We didn't know what to do. Resorts sent workers home. Um, I know that, that would, my guess is Aspen employees, you know, probably 3000 people for the year. Those are employees who traditionally might then um, turn into front desk, um, front desk workers at a hotel or um, stay and work in our communities, those people then had a really big challenge in coming back because of housing and things like that. So um, on top of these things here, it did not help during the pandemic that um, our local seasonal workforce was really encouraged to go back to where, um, back to their families um, during the shutdown. Here's some other things um, that the Workforce Center po um, po uh, points to that I have also seen in our local market. Um, people retiring um, in some circumstances, people were able to sell their houses where we live locally and maybe retire five years earlier um, and choose not to work. Um, there's a slowing birth rate. So it just means that there's less people um, aging into our workforce. Uh, women dropped out of the workforce to stay home and deal with childcare. Um, I've seen that a lot here is that um, new moms aren't able to get their kids into childcare, so they're staying home more. Um, increase in part-time work, limited visa workers, um, the list sort of goes on. But just to tell us, um, you know, I also think while these are obstacles, it's always um, opportunities to, feel, to figure out why people left the workforce and how can we encourage them to come back. Okay, so remember, now we are thinking to ourselves, there's still that 85% of the workforce <laughs> that is living and working in Aspen um, and would love to come work for you if the opportunity is right and if the opportunity is good for them. So let's think about how we can reach them. This is taken from your group at the Aspen Chamber of uh, where you guys are successfully able to hire. Um, so let's remember this and figure out how we're gonna lean into this a little bit. So more than half of job seekers or employers are reporting that um, word of mouth is still really strong for them. Um, and so I'll talk about it a little bit later, but just off the bat, that would tell me that having a um, referral program for your employees would be a really great way to start spending some of your recruiting dollars. Um, if we're already seeing that employees are telling their friends and their coworkers, um, their family, uh, people at their part-time jobs about um, open jobs, then leaning into that would be a great strategy. So putting some um, re referral bonuses saying, hey, hey, Sarah, if you, anybody who, you know, applicants you bring in the door or people who end up working here, I'll give you a $200 bonus, things of like that. Um, local print ads, um, online recruitment sites, these are all things, um, social media um, that we'll talk a little bit more about. How are we doing, ladies? Anything to keep rolling? Fantastic. 
Perfect. Okay. So first let's talk about a meaningful and competitive job posting. So job postings are the first place that, um, or the first impression that applicants are going to have about your company. Um, they are also the hardest things to write, right? You're like, I'm ready to post a job. I've gotten the budget. I figured it out. Now I'm just going to post the job. So I see a lot of thoughtless postings out there. Um, but this is the first thing, you know, we really are trying to convince somebody to come work for our organization. Uh, we know that applying for a job takes time, energy. Um, you're nervous about it. You're like, what if my employer finds out? So um, if you have like a, a, a really boring, uninspiring job posting with not a lot of information, your chances of getting an applicant have just gone significantly down. Why am I going to put myself out there as an applicant if I don't know um, the pay, the schedule, what type of benefits, how good are your benefits? What's the culture like? What type of projects might I be working on? These are all things. Um, one of the most important one is salary, especially in our area. Um, the old notion of, you know, you should just be happy to live in the mountains or um, I want someone who, who isn't, doesn't care about the pay. I want them to be passionate. Um, that is out the door if people can't just afford the basics to live here. So first and foremost is make sure that your um, compensation is competitive with the market. Uh, this just shows you a little bit about the, um, we can look at Pitkin down here, the average annual wage is 65,000. And then you level set that with the cost of housing. Um, so I think is that showing 68 ish is um, what the average cost, the average salary in your area would be. So if you're below that, that's going to make it challenging, right? You're going to need to look at somebody who might already have housing. Um, figure it out. Um, you might have to be offering, you know, a ski pass or what are those other benefits? Um, but this is showing you just to level set it so that if you're below it, you know what you're up against. And if you want to be competitive, um, what you'll want to go above, there's great information online to figure out, um, or honestly, because it's required for job employers to post salary, you can go figure out what your um, competitive market is locally really easily and then decide, do you want to be hitting it? Or are you like, I need to hire, I want people. Do you want to go above the average pay? All things that you'll have to balance for your, your employer. So now that we're talking about a job, um, job posting, I want to encourage you guys to focus on the title. Uh, once again, this title is the first thing that will catch somebody's attention. Um, it is also what gets scraped onto other job boards. So if you are posting on, um, if you have a midsize employer, you probably have a job, an internal job page that you're using when you post it on that. If you haven't already, you can work with indeed and for free, they will scrape, which means they're going to grab all the information from your job board and put it on indeed for free. Um, if you call them and contact them and give them your web page, um, it is important then to have a clear and articulate title that anybody who's just searching on a larger job board might see. Um, I also think it can be helpful if you have a wage that's really attractive or you're offering housing or something unique um, to go ahead and put that in the title because that is going to um, create more attention. It's going to be more attention grabbing. Um, obviously putting in a quick overview, I notice sometimes people are always focused on the job, but they don't talk about the company. Uh, we see often that employees want to grow with a company or they want to join something that has, it doesn't even have to be a mission, <laughs> but they want to, they want to be part of building something. So, you know, if you're an electrician company, talk a little bit about an electrical company, talk a little bit about what makes you different. Um, just don't forget to talk about the organization and the company as a company on top of just the job. I love this one here. Um, this organization was very clear. Why should you apply? And they, they outlined right up top five clear reasons why you should choose to work for them. Um, so that's just an example of how you can be thoughtful about your job postings and not just copy and paste what has been done for the last five years. Um, David Matzvan um, does a great job of, they talk about where you'll spend your time, right? Like what will your average day look like? Will I have time to take ski breaks? Um, is it super busy? Some people love to work in a super busy environment. Some people don't. Um, here's the schedule. We know that a percent of our workforce is balancing two jobs or um, childcare. So outline the exact schedule that you want. This will help attract candidates who can actually do the job for you. 
um, this employer here, Amazing Brains, they hire, oh my gosh, I think they're called brain coaches mm -hmm. or something. So you're like, okay, sounds great. But the pay is like maybe $25 an hour. So you're like, okay, certainly you're not a brain doctor. <laughs> like, what do you mean by brain coach? Um, and really, so they, um, it's sort of somebody who helps you work with your, you know, stress techniques, um, uh, breathing, things of that nature. So they help people understand who might've been a good fit for this job. Um, what might you have done before you become a brain coach? So they talk about, you might be, um, have worked in sports, sports performance. You might be a, uh, mental health, um, or behavioral coach. You might, um, have been a yoga teacher, somebody who knows about breathing techniques and is patient and good with one-on-one -on -one people. You might be a massage therapist. Um, so that's another thing is just not assuming that someone has to have the experience or that people will connect the dots themselves. Um, so, you know, somebody's ad could be like, you know, wanted ready to get out of the food and beverage industry and use those guest service skills to do X, Y, Z, like help form that path for job seekers um, on how you could transform their skill sets and have you work for them. And all of that can be done in a job posting. Back to pay, um, an important part of your job posting is to include the salary um, or the hourly wage. In Colorado, effective January 1st, 2021, it became required by law for employers to post wherever your jobs are posted, online and on a job board, it is required to post the salary. Um, I haven't heard of anybody getting in trouble or things of that nature, but I can tell you that job postings with no salaries get like a small percentage, like a huge, people are not clicking on those jobs. Like now that are um, the trend, the movement has moved in Colorado where job postings share salary. If there's not one there, maybe because the business wasn't aware of the law. Um, and so they haven't updated it yet. It's like, who would possibly apply for this when you can see a job over here that shares the salary, you can quickly match if it's something that would be a good fit for you. So make sure you guys are posting your salaries. Um, it doesn't have to be the exact um, wage. It can be a range, um, but it is an important part of your job postings. So some high level do's and don'ts um, to wrap up our job posting section. Um, you do want to understand your market. Um, and if you are not receiving any applications for it, um, I say that that's like a, in a, a red alert, like, okay, be open to that, understand it. Um, don't continue just to like, you know, do the same thing over and over and over. Um, at that point, you'll want to get innovative either with your staffing models. If you don't think you'll be able to fill the job, you'll want to figure out if you can be more competitive on wage or benefits. Um, but to get, just, just notice if you're not getting applicants, like it's time to switch, switch up your approach. Um, be innovative and think like a marketer. If you have marketing teams in your organization, I would absolutely engage them um, to say, how do we stand out as an employer? Uh, I'll show you some tips today, but just instead of just being a hiring manager, like really think like a marketer. Um, and it's always important to talk to current employees, find out why they came to, you, why they came to your job, how they found it. Um, and sort of how you can recreate that wheel. Um, don't, some barriers to remove so that you can get more applicants. Don't ask for written references up front. I see a small percentage of employers still doing this, but um, that is just a time consuming effort that will um, just create more barriers um, and people won't want to apply. Don't post and pray. This means just post your job and don't advertise it and then wonder why you don't get applicants. Um, if you have PDA, PDF and paper applications, I would get, strongly recommend getting rid of that. That's just another um, hurdle that people have to get over. Um, Google has Google Forms. You can come up with something like that, but anything that can be completed online or on a phone um, is going to be your best avenue. At the very least, just say, send me your resume to an email. And then scan through your job and get rid of any unnecessary qualifications. Um, if you don't actually need a college degree, get rid of that. Um, if you think you need seven years, see what happens if you scale it back to three years um, and train somebody, right? So just be thoughtful about that process. This is just an example to show you how, um, how busy, I mean, this is what applicants are looking at every time they land on Indeed um, or wherever they're searching jobs, it is, it is a crowded market. And so our goal is how can you stand out in that market? 
So next we're going to talk about being visible. Um, this in recruiting is called employment branding. Um, and it is really the number one thing that you guys can do as an employer um, to grow your talent pipeline now and into the future. Um, this is how you can start talking about your business as um, a workplace, not just as a product or a restaurant or a hotel, um, but thinking of it as sort of a separate marketing channel to your workplace. How are we gonna promote you as a workplace? The goal is to have people going directly to your website. So I like to use Patagonia as an example of this, um, is that Patagonia doesn't have to post their jobs anymore, right? We've heard for years, you know, probably 20 years ago, they had a book out, Let My People Go Surfing. And it was all about what an amazing culture they created at Patagonia. And then they were some of the first places to have on-site childcare. So they really did things along the way to stand out as an employer to the point where they don't have to advertise jobs. People are all over the country go and seek out how to work for Patagonia. And I understand that might feel like a reach for you guys, but um, think about how you can do that kind of stuff locally. Like what can you do locally to stand out as an employer so that people are going to your website, searching to see what openings they are, proactively looking for how they can join your company. Um, at Eagle County, sorry, I didn't mention this, but I am, um, I have a full-time job also. I'm the HR deputy director at Eagle County Government. Um, and one way I measure this at work is um, how many people are coming directly to our website to apply. So they can either say they found our job on Indeed or Mountain Careers, wherever they found it. Um, and I have been trying to grow the pie. To me, it's a success when people either come to us from friends or family or they've come directly to um, Eagle County website. To me, that's like, they don't know where they heard about it but they are just familiar with Eagle County as a great employer. So that's what you guys, um, you'll wanna strive for. Some ways to be um, visible as an employer. Um, awards are great for that. So, um, you know, once you are ready and you think you've been working on your culture and your benefits, um, you know, applying for some great place to work awards, whether they're locally or um, nationally is a great way to start. Um, uh, having a career page on your own website where you show pictures of employees, um, employees doing fun things, um, but at least having some sort of landing page that talks about yourself as an employer is an important a career section, even if you don't have um, jobs uh, open or available. Um, obviously, always a great thing to do is to collect email addresses of people who are possibly interested in you as an employer now or in the future. Um, posting on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of the last social media platforms where you can still have organic traffic. What that means is on Instagram and Facebook, if you're posting things there, it is so hard for it actually to be seen, even to your own audience who's already following you. Um, we've seen it. We've hired a content manager and social media manager at Mountain Careers. Um, and when, if we want things to get good traction on link or sorry, Instagram and Facebook, it requires putting dollars behind it, which is fine. And obviously a good strategy as well. Um, LinkedIn still is pretty organic, meaning that whoever's posting things, you'll really see those things. So even if, you know, you're starting and you have 50 followers on your LinkedIn account, um, I would highly recommend that. Um, it's also a great way to grow yourself as a professional. Um, and so, you know, even if you don't have a workplace account, you can be sharing things about your workplace on your own, um, professional, um, or your own LinkedIn page. So I'm, I'm very into LinkedIn talking about, you know, why you like your workplace, a fun thing you guys did, um, an article you read about leadership that you really liked, all that will speak positively about your workplace um, and help you attract candidates. Um, and then we talked a little bit about a referral program. We've really seen this um, grow as a great, um, as a great way to attract top talent is, you know, to bring people's friends and family. If they like working there, um, people don't usually recommend someone who's not going to be a good employee. Um, and so that's a great way to make sure you're getting strong talent. Um, but to do that, you have to focus on your culture, right? People have to like and enjoy working where they are. They have to see um, professional opportunities where they are. They have to think they're being paid fairly where they are um, in order to recommend others. 
This is a favorite local example, um, Root and Flower, um, owned by Sam in the front here. Um, from the beginning, she also um, really focused on culture and team building um, for her restaurant staff, which is traditionally a really hard area to fill. Um, annually, they take a trip together. Um, I think they usually go somewhere and go wine tasting. Um, they've built such a strong culture. They're valuing their employees. They get involved in the community, which is also a great way to um, draw attention to yourself as an employer. Um, they recently started hosting a, a local LGBTQ um, queer night at one of their bars and restaurants um, and support a local nonprofit that supports our pride community. Um, they're always sponsoring local events or teams. Um, so really that community involvement is a great way for um, locals to know about you as an employer as well. One of the strongest things you can do is to also focus on internal communication. So while that seems, um, you know, how is that gonna help my recruiting? Um, the first thing is for employees who currently work there to know about their benefits, um, to know about their, like what makes them a good employee or a good employer, I'm sorry. So at the drop of a hat, if someone says, where do you work? They can quickly articulate um, why they like working there and what their benefits are and what makes working there so great. So prior, when employers start to go down this um, visibility and branding route, I highly recommend that they start with, you know, a, a, an internal newsletter. It doesn't have to be fancy, but um, something where you're continually reminding employees about the benefits of working there, how they access their benefits, um, and then what local what job openings you might have open. And then that's where you could also include your referral program. Um, next, we're gonna focus a little bit on creating an effective hiring process. Um, the reason it's important, you know, I don't wanna spend too much time here, but what I do want you guys to realize is that when we have small hiring pools or a small amount of applicants coming in, a majority of the applicants applying for your job probably have applications out to other employers as well. Um, so let's say you just have 10 people applying for your job, a, a large percentage of those are gonna be going through other hiring processes somewhere else. And so um, I want them to land with you guys, not with somebody else. So a few quick things that you can do um, is upfront is to have a hiring process outlined. This is just an example, but um, really spend time and Aaron, understand. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you, but um, it seems like some of those slides are um, kind of running over each other. And it looks like it's, yeah, if you maybe just want to go back and forward one. Okay, that looks good. Sorry to interrupt, but I just- No, sure you're good. Great content. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the important piece here is just to have a hiring process. Honestly, <laughs> I did just, um, once it's so easy to get your job posted and I know you're exhausted and you're just overworked and all these things, but just understand a little bit about how long you're gonna leave your job posting open. When do you anticipate doing interviews and communicate that information with applicants? Um, that way they don't feel ghosted by you. They don't feel like, um, you know, they thought they were going to hear back from you in two days when really you didn't plan to get back to applicants for three weeks. Um, so at the very least, just be a little bit, just be thoughtful about how long you're going to do this and what is the anticipated process. If things change, no big deal. You can at, let your top candidates know, um, but just really think through um, that because imp and getting back to people quickly is an important piece of this. If I, if in this hiring market, if top if I see somebody who's very qualified for a job, I would call them back within a day or two um, and just let them know, even if you don't have all the answers, I'm excited you applied, your information looks exciting. You know, my manager is out of town on vacation, but um, I'd love to schedule something with you next week um, to get to know you. So the more that you can um, create that conversation and information flow um, and updates, the better chances you'll have of securing um, a top talented person at your organization. I'm gonna skip over that because, um, and as you know this, the cost of hiring a bad employee is exorbitant. We know that I would say when, um, you know, it's probably you spend 80% of your time with um, a, a challenging employee in the workplace. So um, it is important to spend time on, we just, you know, we went through all this hard work to hire and to build this beautiful employment brand. And so, to ensure that you also spend time on your hiring process is important to recruiting. Um, spend time figuring out your interview questions. Think about, is there um, 
a sample work product they can provide you in advance? Um, how can you have an interview process where you really understand somebody's skill sets that you're just not so burnt out at this point that you're just ready to plug somebody in? Um, because we know that at the end of the day, a bad hire will end up costing your organization. So retention is the best form of recruiting, similar to um, how we've talked about internal um, references um, and having people referral programs. Um, first, we don't want to lose good employees to other employers. Um, so it really is important to listen to your workforce and understand um, what, why they stay, um, what they need to stay for your company. Um, by focusing on these two things, you will be able to retain employees better and then also better attract employees. Um, what they are saying is what other job seekers will be thinking. Um, and so that is an important piece. I, this, is, this is definitely new and something newly that I want to talk about in I guess we're in 2022 now, but um, this slide spoke to me. I grabbed this from your Aspen Chamber um, data and it said, do you feel that you're having a staffing shortage, right? So everybody says, yes, um, we can see her. I don't know, it's probably about 70% answered yes. I think that's representative also of like the fact that there's then a small, a percentage of your workforce who is working way, is working hard because they, you can't, you have these other unfilled positions. Um, so taking note of that and figuring out how you take care of those who are currently working at your workplace is so important once again, so that they don't leave. Um, and I know this was just talking generally, like, do you feel like you're having staffing shortages or not? Um, but then I look at this pie and I'm like, oh, wow. So 80% of businesses, their people feel like they have staffing shortages. So they're, they're working harder. They're, they're getting burnt out themselves. So let's really listen to them and figure out what it takes for them to stay. Um, and those benefits will then benefit new employees as well. Additionally, there's nothing worse than a new employee coming into the organization only to get soured by <laughs> another employee who's um, burnt out or not happy. Um, so this is taking a look at um, information that came from your data at the Aspen Chamber as well. Um, and it's telling us why people have left their current positions. Um, and I think it's important to note um, that you know, childcare, housing, things like that end up being, um, wow, even found a higher paying job, found a higher paying job. Okay, it's in there twice, um, probably for different reasons. Um, that people aren't just leaving because of housing or that it's expensive, um, especially in the work that I do. Um, I work with people who dream of living in the mountains. Um, we started mountain careers because um, myself realized that my family was never moving back to a city, although I'm born and raised in, in downtown Chicago. Uh, we, once we got into the lifestyle, you could double our salaries to move to a city that we specifically want to live and work in the mountains. And I knew there was other people like us, um, that, and then it takes the sacrifice for those of us who are living here, but, um, we have to be, but they also want things that you would want in a real career. They want, um, you know, to increase their earnings, their wages. Um, they want to have advancement in their careers. Um, they might want a career change in general. And these are the things that are reflected in the chamber's data here. Um, it's also not bad in some cases for employees to leave. Like we want them to grow and develop. Um, you, you want them to like you as an employer and want to come back. Maybe they'll go somewhere to be a supervisor, right? Gain those skill sets and then come back to you as a manager one day. I know I did that myself in my career. Um, so it's important to realize that, um, the baseline is pay. You can't get around that and some benefits, but after that career growth, career progression, um, culture, um, working for, you know, a great boss. Those are all reasons why employees um, stay with an organization or join an organization. And then those are all things that will be, um, build your employment branding. When I survey at Mountain Careers, um, we do an annual survey to figure out like what is most important for people in jobs. Um, pay continues to be a high one for us in the mountains. We've been substantially behind for years. So we have, it, it feels, I'm sure like a business owner, like it's hard to catch up to the pay, um, but it really has been years coming that we needed to catch up. Um, flexibility is another huge one where I think our mountain communities were slow to catch up 
on that. I had lots of friends on the front range who had remote flexible jobs way before the pandemic and could go to Moab at a drop of a hat and work from a Friday there. Um, and our mountain communities just were not there yet culturally in our businesses. Um, and a lot of our positions are frontline and guest facing. So I understand that as well. But um, all of those are ways that you can um, grow and retain your workforce by focusing on. I love this quote here from Richard Branson, who's known, um, who's known to create great workplaces, great leaders or great listeners um, who know their best assets are their people. So um, just whatever it takes in your business to pause and really focus on um, the people and to listen to the exact, what, what they're saying, why people are leaving. You know, if someone's leaving, not a big deal, right? They, they're, they're growing their careers professionally, um, but understand like, would they recommend somebody to come work here? Do they have recommendations about the job? Um, the scope of work. I've I've talked to people leaving an organization who were hired in to a job that they said was going to be, you know, so different or so much more challenging than it actually was. And that's why they were leaving. So um, I think just, just listening to your people is a good point. Um, it can't go without being said that connection, although we all like to be remote these days, but still forming connection is an important part of the workplace. Um, I put this picture up here in case you can do rafting trips or hiking or dinners and it doesn't have to be expensive, but, you know, creating that connection among um, employees in the workplace will help you guys attract and retain. So I'm going to quickly show you a little bit about Mountain Careers. Um, just we are here to help and support you guys um, as a workplace. Um, I've loved getting to know the chamber. Uh, we are working closely with um, Aspen Skiing Company. Um, I have spoken to the hospital about how we can better um, help you guys reach your locals who already live in the community. Um, I think that is always our untapped market in, in our mountain towns are people who are living in the community. Um, we're seeing that people who are moving to mountain towns with remote work, especially if they're coming as a couple, they end up wanting to work for the community. It's the best way to really get involved. And so I'll meet couples to say, one of us has to work in the community. <laughs> we don't want to just live in this beautiful town and be like, you know, held up in our house. We want to make friends. We want to be part and serve this community as well. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, Mountain Careers is a job board. It's a platform with a, a weekly newsletter. Um, where we post jobs in all mountain towns. Our network is strongest in Summit County, Vail Valley area, and the Aspen region. Um, we do reach some California resorts. We have a large population of people in Denver who follow us, um, who are dreaming of moving up, but our goals right now with the housing market are really to grow our network in our local mountain towns. Um, we, we reach these passive job seekers that we spoke of through our weekly newsletter, um, we've been, we actively put out content um, in magazines to promote the mountain lifestyle um, and to help people overcome the challenges that come with that. Um, and through that, we attract people to our site who then hopefully become applicants for you um, later down the road. Um, we post on social media. I said, remember that 85%. Um, they spend a large percent of their day, hours online <laughs> on social media scrolling through. And so with Mountain Careers, we really try to get in front of them. People who are already searching for, you know, mountain lifestyle content or locals. Um, we put our Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook um, posts in front of them. Um, and then also share your job postings with them. So um, I would say on average right now, we probably have about 50 job postings a week. Um, so it is, we keep our website clean and clear um, so that applicants aren't um, bothered by ads and things like that. We really want it to be simple and easy for your, you, your job to stand out um, and reach top talent. So um, instead of being on Indeed where there might be thousands of jobs, um, we keep it small here. We're specifically focused on um, our mountain communities. Um, and we've partnered to be able to give you guys 10% off your job postings all summer. Um, and you can write down this code here, but I know the team will also email it out to you. So um, summer 2022. Um, and then, sorry, I didn't put my information up here. I'll stick it in the chat or you guys are welcome to Allison or Sarah. Um, I'm happy to answer questions specifically um, either on the call today or following this meeting. 
Karen, thank you so much. And I think that's the most impressive 1245 stop I have ever <laughs> yeah, seen. I, like, uh, I just started to <laughs> think like, maybe I need water. I just, I just blew through that. So happy um, to answer any questions. So just to remind um, those of you in attendance, we are recording. This will be sent out along with um, Aaron's contact information, your special members only code to get 10% off at Mountain Careers. I'm going to scoop you a little bit, Aaron, because they're also building out um, some cool features that will come online at some point where the applicant can search for other metrics that are important to them, like um, commute distance, and then it'll just bring up the jobs that are available in their acceptable commute distance, some of those benefits that we're talking about, if someone has to make sure that it's flexible enough that they can pick up their um, newborn, you know, their do child care, and that's one of the things that your job offers, um, they would be able to find you that way. So that's, that's just such a great um, partnership there, Aaron, and tons of great information. We will take questions now. I believe you can raise your hand and I can um, pull you up or um, those of you who are um, better with the chat, um, you can look over to the side here. I see the question for Aaron's contact information, which we will send out. Aaron, you can put that in the chat as well. Great. Um, and yeah, one note on that um, cost of living slide. Um, I actually believe that um, where 65 or 68 would be the adjusted um, for picking county that we're oh. our um, our average right now um, pay locally from the latest data is closer to 75 a year. So okay. if you are um, looking for those of you who are um, hiring a full time salary position, um, kind of use that as your metric. Are we offering um, about where other you know people can earn, or is this a little lower? Maybe we have other enticing things that make that okay. Um, is this higher, and can we brag about that? So um, yeah, that sixty-five to seventy is about average here in Pitkin County. Um, Thank you. I before I forget, I'm also putting a survey link in this because I if anybody's sneaking out, I don't want you to sneak out before. Um, clicking on that survey, uh, Survey Monkey tells me it takes two minutes to complete. I think that's um, actually being generous. Um, just to make sure that our programming is meeting your needs um, as we continue to develop ways to support all of you in hiring throughout the summer. So please click on that link. Um, do you want to take this one, Erin, for um, passive candidates? Yeah, I love that question. Thanks, Kevin. So the question is, what do you suggest the best ways to reach the 85% of passive candidates who are open to new opportunities? Um, so going back to some of the things we talked about, I would say uh, social media is a great way to get in front of people who, um, so it's like, so we know they're not necessarily going to job boards um, on a daily basis. Some of them do. And that's why actually Mountain Careers, we, um, to see our job board employees have to sign or job seekers have to give us our email address. So people usually come to us just curious about what type of jobs they might have. They are actively seeking, but also passive. And then we collect their email address so that we can send them the newsletter every week. So um, a lot of people uh, report just browsing it. They want to know about what companies are out there. Um, we find a lot of employers just keep their eye on it to see what the competition is doing. People want to hear about new companies, maybe for um, B2B type stuff. Um, and then our content. So actively on Mountain Careers, we try to keep that 85% engaged through a weekly newsletter. Um, and then the network effect where people say, oh, you know, um, Allison, I know you're in marketing. I just saw a great marketing job, um, you know, at this, at this company XYZ and forward it on to you. Um, but what employers can do themselves, um, I would say are two one I would love to see is if leaders can start talking about themselves and their leadership philosophies and what they're working on on LinkedIn, that would be a great way, right? You're basically, you can publish information about yourself as an employer, um, about your culture. So LinkedIn is a great, easy way um, to start there. Um, and if you are the owner of a company, just to you know share um, what your employees mean to you or start celebrating um, anniversaries or, you know, people landing great projects, um, would be a great way. Um, community involvement is another one, um, that 85%, I promise you the minute I meet someone who's awesome, I assume that they have an awesome, awesome culture. So, um, through the things you guys do here at the chamber or, um, you know, going to other nonprofits, um, just getting involved in the community. When I, once I make a personal connection with someone, I'm always like, Oh my gosh, I would definitely go work at, 
you know, Dave and Matt's van only because I, or quiet cat is another local one here in the Vale area because their people are out and about their leaders are out and about, um, just being part of the community trail, trail maintenance, like anything like that, those types of things, um, to me would be considered employment branding and reaching that 85%. And Aaron, I want to stress, um, one slide that really spoke to me about, of course, getting locals would be the easiest way, first of all, for you to get your job filled faster and not have to deal with those moving costs and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and making that connection, I think, between the skill set that might work. So you might have a job that's open um, and really having in your job description or in your word of mouth, like um, who might be good for this? And it might not be someone who already has that title or who has ever studied that skill, but there's transferable skills. Um, I think that was one of my biggest takeaways right now is in a town like this to fill your job, what kind of um, background experience would you have wanted someone to have and maybe going directly there to recruit, right? Like you said, hostesses at a restaurant um, might be really good for an office assistance. And so um, where can you find those kind of connections of someone who isn't necessarily in your industry? So let me give you a great example because I love this stuff. Um, recently, we were hiring for a recruiter um, and there's not a lot of recruiter. I mean, I love HR, maybe not a lot of people love hiring. So I was shocked that it wasn't like filled quickly. So I was like, you know what, we wanted someone um, with less experience. And you know, that's sort of where our budget was. So and so I didn't care if they had recruiting experience at all. But what I did was I, I asked them some questions, I gave them the questions in advance, I said, you know, tell me whatever, five questions you don't want to ask in an interview. Tell me three places you would post jobs to reach um, Spanish speaking um, employees, things of that nature, all with the understanding that they could go, if they could go figure out how to Google it and bring it to me in an interview, voila. I just want someone who is creative, you know, curious and can go find the information because it's not hard to figure out you know, things you shouldn't ask in an interview or to find a new job board that we haven't used. I just wanted to see where you act actively going to do it. And could you put together, um, you know, Facebook posts for me, but just build it in a slide. It doesn't have to be perfect. Show me, show me some of your skills in advance. And I don't care that you've done this before. I can teach you the real things or honestly, you can Google a lot of it, but are you like savvy enough to do that is what I wanted to know. Wonderful. Um, any more questions that you'd like to put in the chat? Again, I really appreciate if you take one moment right now, we're getting you out a little early uh, to take that survey and um, please look in your email for a wrap up of this as well as that discount code and Aaron's um, contact information. And thank you all for taking the time to hop on. I hope this was helpful and that you do have a great hiring season going into summer. Thank you. No, you're making me think. I'm like, what have we missed that would be helpful for? I think giving one more moment for any questions, but it looks like everyone yeah, is of course. perfectly satisfied. Thank you, Erin. Can I talk? Oh, oh hi. hi Taylor. Um, can I talk about overcoming the housing challenges? So. I do not <laughs> try to, um, I actually try to stay out of the housing um, lane a little bit only because um, I don't want, my, my, my success has been, not my personal success, but my success in recruiting has been sort of saying like, I'm gonna deal with the challenges, but I'm gonna focus on um, being a strong workplace and communicating the benefits that people have. Um, I would say that, what a workplace could do is that I've our, what our counties are doing um, and local communities, some of them have really strong housing programs, um, down payment assistance, classes, things of that nature. And it's really, really hard to navigate, even if you've lived here for a long time. So as an employer, um, obviously, first and foremost, if you can afford to buy your own housing, that is going to be the best. But if you're not there, one thing that you can do is become um, involved locally in your um in your, sorry, housing authorities and local governments, and then understand the benefits that they provide so you can explain them to your employees um, or to new people coming here. So to give you an idea, like I know the town of Vail gives up to you know, $80,000 or I don't know, Eagle County, you, and I know Pitkin County is even, 
is even more in these areas. But if you can understand the benefits, they are hard for somebody to understand. So what you can do as a local business owner would be to understand those benefits and so and communicate to the, your employees even better yet, give them time off to go to you know these housing classes um, or to schedule meetings with um, people in the housing authorities so that they can understand um, their options and avenues to land housing. And Charlie, one thing I can do in our wrap up email that will go out is provide a link to the chamber's relocation guide. We do have a lot of information on our website. If you are recruiting for, mm. from out of town or um, as Aaron spoke about, like that second spouse who might be looking for a job um, that has links to things like APSHA and what the school system is like and what the um, RAFTA system is like so that you can kind of send that along with your um, recruitment or during an interview, um, a better idea of what it would take to kind of get the foothold in, in the door here at in Aspen. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are seeing it too, but we see a lot of employers hiring people remote with the plan of moving. Um, and then those dates are just continuing to be pushed back further and further as people find challenges. But um, there's, but you're, people have the most unique circumstances. You're always surprised by who can like come live in a cousin's house for a little bit or, um, you know, things of that nature. So continue to be innovative, continue to not give up um, and to promote yourself as a strong workplace and focus on the employees you do have to um, are all great resources. Mountaincareers.com to look at that a little bit more and some of the blogs and upcoming webinars. I know, Erin, I think you keep doing some um, webinars like this to help mm -hmm. with our businesses. So I, again, want to thank everyone for their time, especially Erin um, for awesome. providing this information and we'll get it out to the gang later this week. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I did just um, put a link in there with our current job postings. Um, or if you just go to mountaincareers.com and sign up, you'll start to receive our newsletters. Um, and I would love to help you guys hire. So um, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's wonderful to get to um, know the chambers and the businesses and specifically um, what they're working on and how we can help. Thanks, Erin. Thank you.